All right, so turn live 2D and where should we start? Should we start a new one? Or let's let's create a new part and do the face all over again. All right, so let's create a new part. We call it ID um, new or zero one new face new face zero zero one English name is new face Japanese name is new face all right so you got that should be right press OK I get the new face and can we not move this up 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 right next to the original face so we got the new face up here <clears throat> all right now let's start with let's assuming we don't have a face or an turn off the eyes and eyeballs eyebrow all the everything off 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 so we only have the body here, all right? Decapitated. So first of all, let's throw in our guide image, which we which we don't have it right now. Uh, how do we do that? We just basically we just drag and drop. Import as guide image, and why is it so small? Because it is attached to certain deformer. I don't know why I do that. Wait a minute. This shouldn't okay. As you can see, when I click, when I select the guide image group layer or part, it is already attached to or related to the face transformer deformer, which shouldn't be right because why would a guide image have any deformer affecting it? So let's get back to reference plane, canceling out everything, and click it again, and then let's throw in that image that we just threw in. Just now guide image press OK and and you don't see the body obviously because you know the body uh, it's there already I guess I'll turn it off for now so we throw in the ghost image tra half transparent one and even if guide image is at 100% that is the uh, default transparency it has the opacity Okay, so we got the guide. Now let's put in the texture. Um, let me use. I'm not gonna use the pen. I find it more flexible when I'm using the mouse on this. Let's zoom in and doing the face. Okay, so it's gonna be a bit different for the face this time than what I talked what I taught uh, previously in the last episode. Last episode, I did sort of like a, a, a layered uh, folding mechanic thing for the polygons. For face, there's a certain formula for this, and, and it usually works universally. But let's first put it, put it in. Let's do this across the face like this. Actually, just to make sure it's just right. There. Nah. Yeah. And I want four dots along here. So, or we can do this side first and then do, oh, actually that's a bad idea. Let's do here and then one, two, three. Three, yeah, that's pretty good. And one, two, three, All right? So symmetrically, one, two, three. Drop down here, one, two, three. And I want this line to follow this line, this line to follow this line, this to, mm, maybe not this one. Okay. And then let's do some six, let's do a sort of like a zigzag. Should I do like this? Or I'll, I'll do it like this. Huh? There. This, this, this. Uh. Yep. 
this, this, and this. So we got this little beard here, and this is what we need. We want this kind of zigzag um, movement happening here. Uh, this can be slightly off, but since you know we we don't move this much, this too much, so it's fine. But sort of this kind of pattern is what you want to have on the cheeks. The more refined is better. So you can you just put them in even smaller ones, you know, if you have to. Um, it gives you better control. But obviously, if you have too many of them, you're gonna have a bad time just moving a, an inch off the face because you have to move like 16 dots. So that's a reasonable amount, and we'll we'll do the rest like this. Probably uh, here and here. So we got this happening as well. <clears throat> All right, there there and yeah that's pretty good and this so we got this 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 and this uh, this should go here I think I have one here and here I got this here oh wait wait, wait. this one goes here And this, this, and this. <clears throat> and the top of the head doesn't matter that much, you know, because we, we won't be moving here much. So we don't need that many polygons or uh, that accurately. Anyhow, we have this face, the polygon mapped out and it's dropped in already. And it's currently in the guide image layer, which isn't the one we want. It wants. So we select the texture and let's go here, parts put it into our new face layer or group. So now it's a new face and I'm gonna call it the IBS new face texture. And then we move it back up here to match the guide image. I can use my arrow key on my keyboard to do refine adjustments. Once you have it down, we can give it a parameter. Active X and active Y. Just click X and click add three keys. Click Y and add three keys. And you get them at negative 30, 0, and 30 and press OK. Now if you don't if you don't see this uh, grid here, if you if you're seeing two horizontal layers, just click on the blue. Oops, where am I? I'm quite lost. Yeah, just click on a blue. If you highlight, if you hover this area, you'll see a blue box. Click on it, and you'll see it merging into one one uh, one system. So, I think I did something wrong just now, but I'm gonna add this per perimeter back for the new face texture. I can turn off the guy, I can lock the guy image in case I'm moving it. And like you see, all the other layers are all locked except for the new face. So, it is ready to be animated. Now, how do we know how much to the left, how much to the right, and what do we do with the dots? Obviously, we gotta throw in those images that we drew earlier. So here it is. Let's go with the, let's go with left. Drag and drop, and guide image. And it should be in the guide image layer. As you can see, it's here. Is it this one? Yeah, this is the one. Uh, maybe I'll move it slightly to, I have to move, oh wait, why would I have to move the whole thing? Can I not just move the face? Maybe that's a property of a uh, guide image, but I can probably... No, that's, that's fine, that's fine. I'm gonna move it slightly towards the right side. 
So, oh, oops. Oops, where am I? All right. So originally it's right here, and I wanted to move a little bit to the right side. Actually, originally it was right here, and I want to move it a little bit far to the right. By doing this, it gives a little bit more feeling to the head turning motion. It, it adds a little bit to that uh, miracle 30 degree change shaping. <clears throat> so it helps a little bit. And if I got that, lock it again, go back to the new face, and we can start doing the little changes. Remember to move your parameter to the relative position. We're doing the right side or her left. And so we turn, we select the dot on the right side and now we can start moving those parts. Here. <clears throat> I probably overdrew this part, so I'm not gonna stretch the whole, in whole image. Um, center part is slightly towards this side. Actually, quite a lot because originally this is in a set at the center across the face vertically, right? And that goes with the line that I draw for a normal state. Now it's 30 degrees, and you see the line over here. So of course the face should follow. If, and if there's a line between at the quarter session, it would probably move towards this side as well. So let's get that curve a little bit there. And make sure the most important part is the face, those outline. Don't get stretched, don't get smudged or deformed or distorted too badly. Mm, probably, I find it a little bit too thin on the cheek part. I guess moving it here helps a little bit. Maybe here. And I probably move a little bit towards the right. I can, pr uh, for this this side of the cheek, if it's turning this way, it should be less <clears throat> curvy. It should be uh, more, more straight, more flat, according to physics. And yeah, that's about, that's about okay, because we don't need to do the upper head, as I said. Uh, don't worry about this part the hair will be covering most of it. So it's only, maybe this part, because as I turn this way, um, the side hair might move far, uh, it might move right enough, or move to this side enough, that part of the head might show up. I don't know yet, but to be safe, I would do a little bit of work on it, just in case it does come up. And if you feel like you know you can, you want more refined control around these area, but these dots, just these three dots, don't work together too well. Just jump right in, add some dots here. So here, press OK, and now you got the dots. So you can play with them. And. Maybe it doesn't look that much difference from the start, uh, but as you can see, there's a little bit head turning here, and if you want to go a little bit further for it, for that, just simply shift this to the right side, a little bit, just really bits. You see that? You see that coming through to life? Now that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And let's try to take a look without all those. Um, draft the image behind the body on and we got the face sort of sitting there or oh, let's turn on the face as well you see that it's very subtle it's really very subtle it's almost like you know it's shaked a little bit that's all it does 
but that's good enough. Now, if for someone who is more skilled at 3D modeling, you can probably go further. If the more skillful you are, the more dynamic or the more uh, angle you can stretch, the more differences you can make that is not uh, gonna create a lot of mistakes or distortions. But for beginners, if you're really like, if you're not that good with 3D yet and you're still 2D based, I'd say start with subtle changes. Once you're used to the functions, once you're used to the angles, and you got you you build you develop some space um, interpretations in your head, you know if you got that uh, uh, skill or intelligence sort of building up already, then you can move on to more uh, more stretched angle. But for now, I would say don't go too far and stick to this little bit is good enough. If you want a little bit more, just maybe move it to your right a little bit further, but. Uh, eventually it would be too much you know if, if I for say like if I move it oh although I want this go all the way here and it's almost like it's almost like a character is poke it, it's it's um the neck is sort of stretching forward to the audience like oh, and you know looking at, at the at camera it makes no sense it's not what you're looking for so a little bit stretch helps but don't rely on it and don't overdo it and don't worry too much for now because eventually you put in the eyes and the mouth and they would look perfect much more uh dynamic than it is right now so we got this right side done uh you can probably follow and do like follow the rest or do the rest with following those guide image you drew earlier the same method so you drop the guide image and drag and drop actually make sure it not it's not attached to any deformer so it you know select guide image get to your folders drag and drop guide image okay drag and drop guide image there you go and also you as well drag and drop and now you gotta do the rest of those four angles with the same method not too bad I guess right it sounds tedious but um, it's really better and also have I, there's a reason why I kept those eyes like uh, well why would I need the eyes if I'm just doing the face well have have those eyes in too because when you get to the eye part you'll thank me later um, yeah just have the eyes done it's, it's better so uh, I don't know if there's anything to remind you uh, let's have a look at the expected final product. I'm gonna use the previous one, and I can just I like if I'm do if I've done the previous one, uh, and it's not that perfect. I can totally just use these images and finish it up. So let's get back to the deformer. All right, and yeah, just follow the guidelines and put them back in space in place. So maybe like this. That seems fine, I guess. A little bit inwards here. That's good. And then I got the upper part. Um, I gotta turn off these to actually see what I'm doing. Face transformer. Probably a little bit towards. Actually, I don't want to move that much because I have every, all, all the other parts in place already and they're not too connected well. Maybe here. I just want to keep them symmetrical, not too crazy about all directions. And that's let's give a little bit width on the upper forehead. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not so certain, but Let's go with that. And then the lower part, face down. 
if you are more comfortable with the former for now, just go with it. All you have to do, have I taught you how to do the formers yet? So let's, um, let's say you don't want to uh, move it dot by dots and use the current way I'm doing, which is what the official is teaching you. Um, what you gotta do is select the face or select the face texture. So let's go to drawing layer and select face. You see the dots, just, then you're selecting the face, all right? Create deformer and then say like, you know, change a name for, I would usually change the name here or else it gets messy really quickly. So change your name, call, I usually call it face transformer for uh, deformers. Uh, the other type is rotation, but we're using the curve surface, whatever, and because it's cut off, I don't know what it is, but we're using this one instead of rotation. Rotation is for a neck where, where you uh, tilt your head and that's for rotation. But right now we're needing the waffles and just press curve surface. Destination part, is where the group it should be um, associated deformer meaning it's parent deformer if you want to have the parent decide now or you can change it later but if you want to decide now you can select here press curve and go by three by three is fine for now if you're getting better you can go five by five for more refined control but three by three should be good press ok and you see your new waffle and as you move the waffle it will change the texture Basically, that's that. But since I have the def and you have the deformer, and you know, just like like what I'm showing you right now, uh, move around the corner, move around dots. Everything makes sense uh, along as, as soon as you touches it. All right, so everything sort of makes sense on its own. Oops, why is it? All right. But again. Uh, when you create the former, first thing you want to do is create the active parameters or else you'll be making changes on the same parameter uh, inactively, then you would be the same as not working anything at all. Make sure you have the green dots on. Like that. And so I got the up, right, down, left. All done. Okay, so let's say you have done the four angles already, right? Like right now, I have my uh, transformer all fixed in the new four directions. I can do the rest diagonals manually, or I can go here and press synthesize corners. Now, even if you've done it once, and even if you have the corner already done and it's wrong, when you do the synthesize corners, it will overwrite the original ones you have right there. Simplize corners and press OK. And now I'm going to turn on the eyes and everything back on. It should look better than earlier, but it might show up some mistake, and I'll explain why later. But OK, let's turn off that got an image. Now, like I said, um, it should look right, but it might also have a chance to go wrong. And that's what I'm talking about. You see that eye back there? It's why is it like that? Uh, it's because as I click synthesize corners, not just the layer I'm working on got their corner synthesized, all other layers, all textures, all deformers out there also have their angle X and angle Y reset, uh, have their diagonal four angles resetted. And uh, obviously when I first, before I did the synthesize corner, I already adjusted the, adjusted the eye bags to make it look natural. But since I overwrite that, uh, I overwrote that and that's why it's back to a broken state. Now also I got the face a little bit messed up here. I don't know why. Do I know why? I don't. I just wasn't paying attention. But yes. Yeah, well that's what I'm talking about, right? Sometimes deformers, it's not the best tool for making these refined movements and perhaps that is why officials are teaching you to use deformers as just the guideline for the face. Once you got the guideline done, create a new layer and move it point by point. Now even if I go back, well you can you may be asking like why can I just work on the same group, just have the texture moving point by point. But because if I do that, 
first of all, I need to put in those angles too. Which is crazy because I had the deformer uh, correcting the angle X and angle Y of the face texture, but the face texture itself also have eight or uh, nine points designing these things and it's not efficient in a bigger scheme project. So for for future purposes, for being professional and being universal and coherent and everything, um, you don't want to double this. You don't want to have two layers controlling the same parameters of the same one texture. And that's a very bad idea. So either you make a whole new set of face or you don't use the deformer at all and just use these guidelines, move them in dot by dot. It will take about the same amount of time, I think, unless you're really good at some point. But that's a general idea. I would recommend point by point after having guide image. If you're really in a hurry, for whatever reason, well then use a deformer. But it won't be perfect. Just trust me, it won't be perfect. Uh, especially when you synthesize the corner, all right? Yeah, I can, I can also do this and move it. Oops, move it back in place. Maybe like that, maybe that. Maybe that. Actually, that's a little bit too much. Yeah, I'm having too many things in my like I'm this this these little dots and line here is just affecting my per perspective a lot. I really don't like them when I'm working on uh, modeling, but I guess I'll stick with it for now. Um, anyhow, you get the idea, right? I can I can move that point by point and fix everything, and you know instead of but you know why why do I do that? I might as well use the guide image, get everything done, sim inside the corner, bam, it's right on. So if you're working on your own project, do that instead. And I will see you next time. What I'm gonna do is should I do the hair next time? Or should I do the eyes? Maybe I'll do the eyes first. Since I already I already have started some part of the eyes. So I'll teach the eyes next session. And good luck in your since I'm not showing the full step by step progress of making the perfect face. Uh, if you got any questions, just, just ask me. Uh, it's good if you send me some links to a, a, a screen cap of what you have and what the problem is. You know, draw some notes on it, give me more details, then uh, quicker for me to answer your questions. But if you do have questions with fixing your, your full face, just let me know. Because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show a step-by-step -step, uh, 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 um, speed painting uh, of how to make the whole face. All right, so you get the idea, you get you sort of understand what happens if you make how to make mistakes and how to fix mistakes and sometimes some mistakes can't be fixed uh, easily so it's good to take precautions and do better at the preparation work anyhow visualize your stuff make sure you know what you're doing don't rely too much on your intuition and touch around hopefully you get the right angle the right dots at right place don't do that just go with technical things all right guide image good for you quicker, faster. It looks stupid, but do it. All right. And I'll see you next lesson on Thursday. Wait, today's Monday? Thursday? What, what day is it? Today's Monday. All right. So I'll see you guys Thursday.